Dear students, in this module, we will continue to study the Needleman-Wunsch algorithm. It will be the third module in the series and it will be the last one. So let's take a look at what we know already. If you wanted to compute a position in the alignment matrix, then I mentioned to you that you need to first see the three positions around this current position that you want to calculate. So these positions were the top, the diagonal and the left. Now, if you were, you were to calculate these three positions, you could easily compute the Cij. Why do we want to compute Cij by looking at these three positions? And more so, why do we take the maximum value from these three positions? We'll discuss that in a minute. So once you compute Cij, then you progressively continue to compute each position in the matrix as I will just show you. And by the end, you have the entire matrix that is filled up. So here you see you already have the first row filled up as the initial condition. You have the first column filled up as the initial condition. So if gamma is equal to 1, then the first row will be 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and so on. So in this way, you have settled the initial condition. Next, you want to compute this element. As I just mentioned, you need these three elements, which are now present with you. So you can easily compute this. How do you compute it? All you have to do is take the maximum from these three positions and incorporate plus alpha or minus beta. So if A matches with an A, then it will be 0 plus alpha. However, if there was a different nucleotide here, let's say a C, C does not match with an A, therefore it would have been 0 minus beta or simply minus beta here. So you need to compare if minus gamma is bigger, this minus gamma is bigger or this 0 minus beta is bigger. So you take the maximum and you place it here. So in this way you can compute the entire alignment matrix. One element at a time you can use the three neighbors in each case so once you have computed this then it becomes available for computing the next one and once you have computed this one then you can compute this very easily and this continues until you reach the last position for which you require this element this element and this element. So the entire matrix is filled and now you are ready to select the most optimal alignment. One point that you need to understand here is that why are we trying to get the maximum score from the top left and diagonal elements? This is very important. We are trying to get the maximum score because it will eventually reflect in the final element. So whatever score was computed by using these three elements and then whatever score was computed for each one of them, this will eventually trickle down into the last bottom right element. So it will be quite easy to say that the entire matrix is reflected into this bottom right. So this bottom right element will become very useful once we try to see how to utilize this matrix in the trace pack. So our strategy of using the top diagonal and the left element to compute the entire matrix is finally complete and that this strategy will help us later to calculate the best combination of the alignments.